Hey, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to take a look at these Ore Bar, Ore Boer, whatever they're called, Billy Goat tires. Uh, these are 26 inch by 2.1 inches. These are their 3104. This is their 60 thread per inch version. They also have a 30 thread per inch version. Now, you might have came to these and came to this video because you're looking for a lower price tire than you know, the, the big brand ones. And that's also why I picked them up because I just don't want to pay, you know, 50, 60, even up to $80 per tire. Rather, you can get these for, I think, 23, 25 bucks each. I think it's paid like 50 with tax and everything for both of these. Now, of course, you're not gonna get quite the quality that you will with uh, the name brands, but I actually have the 30 thread per inch on another bike and I like them just fine. So, so today we're gonna install these on my 1996 Gary Fisher Paragon and see how they roll. In addition, we're gonna be installing some new brake shoes for the front and we're gonna be installing these through axle axles <laughs> um, on both the front and the back. Anyway, let's get started. Start off, I'm gonna go ahead and flip the bike all the way over. I don't have a proper work stand here at this house. Now these front tires are actually in pretty good condition in terms of the tread. Not much different than the new ones in fact, but they're pretty old tires and they have quite a bit of wear on the inside, even some cracking here. And I always had this issue, maybe somebody in the comments you, can, you guys can tell me what causes this or how to fix it, but you see how the, uh, the valve stem is kind of <laughs> First of all, it's leaving us, but secondly, it's um, it's tilted, you know, and when, it, when I installed the tubes and tires, they weren't tilted. It seems to be that when I brake or something, the whole tire is rotating on the wheel, you know, which is causing an angle here, which I know will eventually crack the valve stem. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to go ahead and upgrade my tires. But if you know how to fix that, how to prevent it from happening, would love to know. Here's the old skewer, that's the word, skewer. I think I said the wrong word earlier, skewer. So probably won't be needing that, although of course I'll save it because I'm a hoarder. Not really, sort of. Did you know the reason that these have these hooks on them, the reason these hooks are here is so you can hook this behind a spoke like that. I didn't always know that. I had to learn that at some point. It's very good to know. But as you can see, this tire, see this thing hanging? Even though it has enough tread, it's in pretty rough condition. Even, you know, on the side, you can see there's a string, uh, strings, I don't know what you call it, wire starting to show through. So even though it has good tread and the tire's fine, generally, I'm gonna toss it. And it's not that it wouldn't work. Like, you could probably ride on this tire for a long time. But, but here's the thing. I like riding this bike so much. I entered a bike race, the Grand, not, no, what is it? The 12 Hours of Santos. So I'll be doing that in like a month. So I should probably get some like decent tires on the bike. These are light rims. Nice. Uh, speaking of weight, let's see how much these 26 inch uh, tires weigh. These are definitely a cross country, you know, tread pattern. It's not very deep. It's not, you know, a very aggressive tread pattern. All right. First, let's get these, uh, off of here. All right. Let's check what they weigh. I remember 500 grams was like a thing, so, or maybe it was 700, I don't even remember. Let's just check. 573. I think that's on the heavy-ish side for cross-country tire, but I'm not really sure. So there you go, 573 grams. I didn't see that written anywhere on their website. I didn't see that written on the Amazon ad, but there you go, 573, it's their Billy Goat. That's their jet compound. It's a foldable with 60 threads per inch. It says light right here. All right. Now let's go ahead and get it on the wheel. It obviously is a directional tire, has kind of a, a point to it. So, 
Uh, which way will it go? So if the tire goes like this, okay, so it goes this way. It's gonna go this way, right? Yeah. Tire's gonna go like that, I think. I think that's right. Oh, I guess if I wanna be pro, I'll at least align my my valve stem with uh, something. Let's put it right on the brand right there, since it's kind of small. There we go. So I was looking on the website about like uh, this bike, I forget which, which uh, website it was, but like one of those sites which tell you all about the history of the different, you know, older bikes. Oh, newer ones too, I suppose. But anyway, it said that this particular Gary Fisher Paragon in 1996 was $1,200, which kind of shocked me, that's a lot of money. And it, it, is have, it does have like XT components from Mono XT, so it, it was good. And it is a good bike, it has the what, double butted or short tubed whatever aluminum frame, which is very light. Um, but I was still surprised because the thing is, is $1,200 in 1996, I went ahead and Googled that, like what would that be in today's money? That is $2,400. So equivalent of today's money, that was a, this here is a $2,400 bike. So yeah, no wonder it's pretty nice. You know, no wonder it's a, it's a fun bike to ride. No wonder it's a lightweight and it is lightweight. Uh, when I, when I first kind of put it together in my other video, by the way, I have, you can go check out if you'd like. It was 11.1 uh, kilograms, which is like 24 pounds, I think, or something like that. So it's pretty, it's a lightweight bike, you know. All right, because we're getting ready to put the wheels back on, let's go ahead and open these skewers. Now I've actually bought these for another bike before and I liked them so much, I decided why not get them for this bike too. It's a set. I don't remember the price exactly. I'll put it up on the screen. I want to say it was like 10 or 15 bucks, so it's not too much. And it just, here's a, here's the reason that I like them over, over normal quick release skewers. The reason I like them is a couple things. Number one, they weigh less. So you lose a little bit of weight, not a lot, but a little bit. Secondly, I think they just look cool. That's probably the biggest thing. And then thirdly, they do provide you a little bit of theft protection. Not that anybody's going to take these old wheels, but yeah, like instead of just flipping it, pulling the wheel right off, you would actually have to come with the Allen wrench, you know? So a little bit of extra, a little bit, another layer there of security, um, better looks and a little bit less weight. And speaking of weight, we'll, we'll go ahead and check that right now. Okay. Over to the scale. Let's go ahead and check the weight. Here is the front skewer, the, the normal old one, 71 grams. And let's weigh the new one at 30, 32. What did I say? What the other was? So you have 32 and 72. So what's that? That's 40 grams. So you're saving 40 grams. That's not bad. So 40 grams on the front alone. Maybe it's another 40 or more on the back. So you're like 80 grams. Okay, and you may be thinking, what the heck is 100 grams or what is 80 grams? Well, I can tell you what's 100 grams. 100 grams is a chocolate candy bar. If you go to the, like, the grocery store and get any kind of chocolate candy bar, that'll be Oops. that'll be 100 grams. So, you know, the weight savings you're saving here by switching to these skewers is, is roughly, plus or minus a little bit, a candy bar. And these are cool. So all you do is just uh, thread them on. One side is threaded, one side is not. And the side that's threaded does have like uh, a bit of a knurling, so you can kind of like see how I'm tightening it in with, tightening it in with my fingers just to kind of get it a little bit, you know, snug. This part, this part spins, so you can't like, uh, can't get it too tight like that. Once you get it just slightly, then you grab an Allen wrench. Ah, I missed my Park Tools WDS-1 or whatever the heck it is. I'm missing it. All right, so we'll just use this. It looks like a six millimeter, no, excuse me, five millimeter. So really it's, you just simply snug it down. I'm sure there's a particular torquing, but I just do like that and should be good. I should get a torque wrench one day. Hey, if there's a tool company out there you want to sponsor me with a torque wrench, hook me up. All right, done. Okay, while we're over here at the front, let's go ahead and replace these brake pads. These original ones might have been actually nicer than these new ones. I don't really know. These new ones are the M65T because these are the ones that you can replace the uh, the pad itself out aside this metal part. But I was trying to get this out of here and I backed the set screw off and everything and it was just not budging. So I was just like, why am I even bothering? I think these are gonna be just fine and they may even look kind of cooler. So uh, 
I'm just getting these. And I don't remember the price again on these, but I'll put them up on the screen. It was probably 10 bucks. I think it was, I think it was $9.99. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get them installed. Okay, I actually really like cantilever brakes. I find them fairly easy to set up and uh, very easy to take the pads on and off. You just, okay, turn it the wrong way. So first of all, turn this 10 millimeter bolt and maybe the bolts are different depending on your system, but mine here is a nice 10 millimeter. You just loosen that up. You don't even have to take it off all the way. Okay, and then you're good to go. Kind of rotate, rotate it out of the way and it should slide out like that. You can see this one didn't look like it still has a lot of meat left, but it is it's just like making some terrible noise. I think that by the way, that's that's that set screw you can take out and you should be able to slide slide it out. Diora LX. LX, I mean that's nice, but I don't know. Tell me if, tell me in the comments if I'm wrong if I should next time get the inserts. I'm still keeping the, the other ones of course, like the I'm still keeping them because I'm a hoarder. No. Um, yeah, I am keeping them though. So, <laughs> so maybe later if I uh, go back and decide I should really use them, I still can do that. So basically you just line it up. Looks like that. Not like that. You stick that on. Stick it on. Come on. Get on there. Sometimes you just have to jiggle things. <laughs> it's an old mechanic trick. Jiggle. Okay, and I'm just gonna tighten that down a little bit, not all the way yet, because I'll probably have to adjust it a little bit. And I'll go ahead and do the other side. Yeah, so I'm gonna be doing this uh, 12 hours, hours of Santos, but I'm not doing 12 hours, don't worry. I can't do 12 hours. Um, I'm gonna be doing the three hours. They have the 12, to six, and three. So I registered for the three hours of Santos. If you happen to be watching this and you're going there, stop by and say hi if you happen to see me. That'd be cool. You'll see this bike. This bike will be here. Will be there, I think. Should be. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and pump up the tire and let's take a look at how it looks. All pumped up on the wheel. All pumped up. Now I don't actually even know how much this is going to be pumped up because my pump doesn't have a gauge. So I just have to guess. Feels pretty good, maybe a little more. There we go. I think that's good. That's about 32 PSI. <laughs> now, by the way, this is a 2.1 inch tire. Actually, let's check that. Be right back. Okay, let's see. 2.1, they claim if you measure from the outside, outside maximum width, you get, what is that? Uh, that's two, eh, less than 2.1. That would be 2.1. So, you know, they claim 2.1. I say it's not quite 2.1. It's more like, it's more like two, I would say. That's kind of disappointing. That's two. Now, I don't know exactly how much I inflated it, as you know. So maybe if you were to inflate it more, it would go even larger, but. As it is, we got about two, which is fine though, because this actually, this bike, originally came with a 1.95 inch tire. So, anyway. Let's see what the width is of my old Schwabble, Schwabby, whatever you call them. Uh, what are these knobby nicks that I'm replacing them with? They look a little wider to me. Let's see what they actually measure out to be. They measure out to be, oh, the same, okay. Yeah, but yeah, even narrower in fact. So even these, which are also rated at 2.1, are actually measuring it more like two. Is this like a conspiracy I'm under uncovering here or something? Anyway, let's go ahead and swap these off. Now these are actually fine. They're not rotating or anything, and they even do have a little bit of grip left right there, but I don't know. I've had these since like 2018 when I first got my carbon fiber uh, bike, and they were used. So I've had these like, what, what's that, 2018, five years? five years and they're already used. I think it's time for them to go. All right, let's go ahead and get this back wheel off. Pop that off, take off this piece of grass or whatever. It's easier if you shift into your smallest cog. My shifting has started to get a little bit worse, so I think I need to, oh wow, that is dry. I need to oil things, I need to adjust things. I've just been riding this thing a lot and I really enjoy this bike. 
Uh, it's been so much fun. You know, part of the fun of it is, is it's because I only had like $142 into it, I think is what I, you know, figured. Because uh, I have so little into it, I just don't mind thrashing it around. Like uh, me and my daughter were practicing tricks in front of the house the other night. And it's like, <laughs> what was I doing? Uh, I don't know what they call it, ghost riding or what, but I was like jumping off the back and just letting it go, you know? And once it just fell, like I screwed up and the whole bike just tumbled. And you know, I don't like that, but it's not a big deal. It's just a, you know, it's not an expensive bike, so. But uh, yeah, that's a cool thing. And I, I've been taking this in all kinds of places. I don't worry about jumping it off curbs. I even park it outside when I go shopping. Of course I put a lock on it, but I wouldn't do that with a thousand dollar, two thousand dollar bike. So. <clears throat> Okay, all the work is done and there is the bike, looking pretty good.